Because of your theory, several laws of physics may need to be re-examined. And then, Dr. E.L. Moraine, one of the men involved in the making of the atomic bomb, wrote, Your project will lead to developments that would be beneficial to all mankind. And uh, Joseph Newman's work has been featured on national television and in hundreds of newspapers and magazines throughout the country. What's the answer to the energy crisis? Suppose a fellow told you the answer was in a machine he has developed. Before you scoff, take a look with Bruce Hall. In the backwoods of Mississippi, a mile down this dirt road, past the keep out and no trespassing signs, is the workshop of Joe Newman, a brilliant self-educated inventor who says he has developed a machine that could solve the energy crisis. Now back to Take Two on CNN. What if someone invented a machine that would make the gasoline engine obsolete? What if someone invented a machine that produced more energy than it used? And that energy is cheap, non-polluting, and safe. That person would probably be hailed as the greatest scientist since Einstein, with a discovery as important as electricity and as revolutionary as the wheel. Joseph Wesley Newman claims to have invented just such a machine. He says that his energy machine could power every American home, farm, business, automobile, and appliance with electricity at a fraction of the present cost. More than 30 scientists and technicians have tested the energy machine, and they agree it works. Right. Well, it's a fascinating story. Uh, first of all, if you can tell uh, stupid people like me as sort of how this machine works. Okay, Dave, it's basically is that you're not creating anything. You're simply utilizing energy that prior to this time hasn't been understood. It took us several thousand years to ever put a water wheel in moving water. And basically what I'm doing is utilizing the energy in the magnetic field that consists of matter in motion, exactly like a moving river does. We are back. Well, would you welcome, please, Joseph Newman. It's nice to meet you. I appreciate you having me. Do you think your machine, if it can be commercially made available, can, for example, a person would buy a three or four hundred pound unit and all of a sudden would be able to produce all of the energy they need for their home? Is that certainly within the realm of possibility exactly i have absolutely no doubt about it that uh, such a device hooked to a home a person will never have to pay for energy again the device will be made uh, smaller as to put in an automobile plane spacecraft you name it this device using the atoms from the, from the magnetic field and what you're doing is that you're converting mass into energy on a 100 percent conversion process that's one of the first prototypes and it uh, that's a 700 pound magnetic rotor and it's got uh, about 8,000 pounds of wire around it now it's gone down that unit there weighs 135 pounds and i showed that at the hilton in uh, new orleans there was approximately uh 2,500 people attended a thousand people outside another 12 1500 standard to get in and uh, it would demonstrate something like 25 times more out than externally and put it into the system you get more wattage out of that than than what you'd, what you'd, put, than mm -hmm. what you'd put in. In fact, a uh, railback battery company is working with me now trying to design a battery to hold up to this recharging effect of this system. Because not only will it run the device, it'll put more energy back into the battery pack and came out of it. So you can... <clears throat> that's, that, that's fascinating. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's, we could stay here all night. But there's a major stumbling block in getting this device to the public. The inventor can't let private industry have the machine until the patent is granted. But obtaining the patent seems to be almost impossible. Examples. December 1981, following the patent application, Joe Newman calls the patent office to talk with an examiner. He is told they don't want to talk to him. Newman protests to his congressman, and a meeting between the inventor and patent officers is arranged in Washington. But on January 6th, 1982, Joe Newman receives a letter that says his patent has been totally denied. A hidden energy device is suspected. But the scheduled meeting on January 27th is held nevertheless, at which time the examiner told Mr. Newman, I don't think I'll ever be able to give you a patent, no matter what evidence you present to me. The, the reason for that statement? Science, patent examiners which, uh, felt that what Joe uh, Newman no, claimed was impossible. On March 13th, after more protests from the inventor, another meeting was convened. This time, he was told they believed there was no hidden energy device and added that they actually believed the machine worked. But now, they feel his technical description of his invention is inadequate. And, I, and then I asked him a second time, in fact. I said, you're saying that you agree that the energy out is greater than the energy in? He said, he said uh, 
Mr. Newman, you say that it does. We looked at the facts. We believe you. Mr. Newman then protested to the Patent Office's Board of Appeals. A meeting is set for September 30th, 1982. Incredibly, at that meeting, Joe Newman is told the description of his invention is now adequate, but... Then they went back and started saying, we don't think that the device is now operable. Now, and, and also at the time of this meeting, they gave me two minutes, two minutes at the very end of the discussion that they allowed me to get up and try to discuss eight, oh, at that time it was 17 years of work in two minutes. So in little less than a year, the U.S. Patent Office has told the man who just may have an amazing machine, number one, they didn't want to talk with him. Number two, they will never give him a patent. Number three, the invention has a hidden energy device. Number four, there is no hidden energy device. Your invention works, but your description of the invention is inadequate. And finally, your description is adequate. Your invention does not work. And now 31 people with scientific backgrounds have signed legal documents swearing to the machine's validity.